I would like to share with you today about my grandfather. His name is Walter Jesperson. Grandpa was a special man in many respects, but most especially in his love for his Savior. His love for Jesus led him passionately to share him with others and kept him persevering faithfully to the end of his life. He was this way because he knew God. As a young teen, he had responded to God's call to follow him as Savior and Lord. This was not without struggle, however. One night on the Canadian dairy farm where he lived at the age of 18, in a desperate search to know God, the Holy Spirit led him to the words in a little booklet he had picked up. It said, many desire the good things of the Christian life, but are unwilling to submit to the Lord. Realizing that this described him, and under deep conviction, he submitted his will and plans to God completely and fully, then and there promising to follow God wherever he would lead. That decision kept him set steadfast and focused for the rest of his life, even though it meant leaving what he loved most in life, his family and the farm. God had bigger and better plans for Grandpa. And he began to teach Grandpa specifically and personally through the truths of Mark 10, 29. Where Jesus says, no one has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake. And for the gospel will fail to receive a hundredfold in the present age. Along with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. Some may call it sacrifice, but Grandpa didn't see it that way. He joyfully gave the best years of his life to Christ, laying up treasures for eternity. He spent many years as a missionary in West China until 1951, when he was forced with his family to leave the country he loved. The remainder of his life was spent challenging others to go and fill God's great commission. As Grandpa walked with God, studied his word daily, and got to know God intimately, he gained an eternal perspective on life. He remained unshakable, no matter what trial or testing came his way, and there were plenty. His hope was in his Savior and in the life to come. He touched numerous lives and is still known today for his frequent comment, the best is yet to come. People often told me and remarked how wonderful my grandfather was and how much they learned from his knowledge of the Lord and his word. As grandpa got older, less mobile, and less able to see, God continued to use him, bringing people to him. He would share God's word, pointing them to verses and scriptures that would meet their needs. He knew his Bible so well that he would ask others to read verses in a passage that he would select and most most of the time, he knew them for memory. To hear him pray was an experience. You knew he knew God. I remember this one time my grandfather was over at our house, and my father asked him, can you please lead our family devotion? And at that time, as you can see from the pictures, his eyesight wasn't so good. And so he told us, okay, okay, kids, open your Bibles to this passage. And so we all did. And he closed his eyes, and he started reciting the passage. And from that passage, he basically, he did a three-point sermon for us. And for me as a child, that made me realize the love and the passion that he had for the Lord through memorization. As the years went by, he outlived all his peers, but that didn't matter. As long as there was life and breath, he saw it as God had a job for him to do. Grandpa was relevant to those of any generation whether young, adults, he would connect with them. He spoke, he taught Sunday school, he counseled, he encouraged, and he prayed specifically for people. He told me once, he said, you know, Jenny, I pray for you and Paul and all your kids. And the day I've chosen for you is Wednesday. You see, every day of the week he would pray. And he had a prayer journal and he would pray specifically for people and for their needs. By the end of his life, all his friends were younger than he. He never grew old spiritually. He never held back from sharing God's word with others when he had the opportunity. 
Even in the last few hours in the hospital, my mom heard him ask one of the nurses as he looked him directly in the eyes, do you know God? The response was no, but I would like to know more. My grandpa invited him to come back for another discussion. You see, the secret of my grandfather's life was passion and a love for Jesus, his Savior. And it was that complete surrenderance to his lordship. Nothing else mattered. God took him at 100 years young, a faithful man to the end. I'm sure he heard those words, well done, Walter. You were a good and faithful servant. Enter in the joy of the Lord. I pray that someday I will also hear those words from my Savior. And that's my prayer for my family and for all of us. That we too, someday when we meet our Savior, we will hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant.